Now that we have explored this concept from a physics point of view, let's observe how it plays out in the movie Interstellar. First, we have the origin timeline, what I would call Timeline A. It's simply a timeline where the time travel Cooper exists. So in this timeline, we see the upbringing of Cooper as a space pilot, and then he's engaged in some kind of space mission. It could be that it's the same mission as we see in the movie, or perhaps a totally different one, because we know that Cooper is a former trained NASA pilot, right? My point being, he's on a space mission. And one thing to emphasize here is that he passes the wormhole and then the black hole. He escapes all those magically, which would then leave him inside the Tesseract. Cooper not only transcends the physical constructs of time, he was also in two places at once. You remember the detailed explanation we went through in the last chapter? You can absolutely review that information again if you need to. So now inside the Tesseract, he consciously decides to transmit the secret NASA coordinate to his daughter Murph, to a moment before the space mission even began. But why, and for what reason? Well, this is basically to allow Cooper to embark on that space mission in the first place. There must be some kind of trigger in that series of events. Because without the coordinates, Cooper wouldn't have been able to locate NASA's location, which would imply that he wouldn't be the astronaut that we see in the movie. Anyway, as you see in a variety of science fiction films, the very act of sending information back in time or even forcing a different decision in the past will dramatically alter the course of events.